Hello friends, welcome back to Online Chalkboard. Today we are starting with the new chapter of class 10 that is chapter 2 polynomials and in this chapter we would be revising, we have recently learned about this in class 9 polynomials, you know about it. We will be revising whatever you have learned and also we will be saying about zero of the polynomial and the relation between coefficient of the polynomials and then we will see how uh, the zero can be represented geometrically and also the division algorithm that we learned in the previous chapter that is real number how it would be working with polynomials these are the things we would, that would be we be learning in polynomials and uh, this video is going to be useful for you for especially for class and students so if you haven't yet subscribed this channel do subscribe this and for receiving notification to press the bell icon and also if you are finding this useful to share this with your friends so let's get started so in class 9 we learned about what are polynomials in one variable okay so i'll just give you an example here 4x plus 3 this is a polynomial with degree 1. You know about degree of a polynomial? That is a variable's power, the highest power of the variable. Suppose it is 4x plus x square. The degree of this polynomial is 2 because that is the highest power of the uh, variable here. And here the power is 1, degree is 1. So any polynomial with degree 1 is called a linear polynomial. And any polynomial with degree 2 is called a quadratic polynomial. And if the degree is 3, that is if it comes like x cube plus 2x plus 6, this is a polynomial with degree 3, this is called cubic polynomial. These are the things that we have learned in class 9. And uh, suppose this is a polynomial x minus root 2 what is the degree of this polynomial yes it's 1 therefore it's a linear polynomial suppose it is like 1 by x minus root 2 is this a linear polynomial no it is 1 by x minus root 2 this is not a polynomial and we also learned about uh, what is terms you see this has got two terms 1 2 so this is a binomial and here it has got three terms 1 2 3 this is called trinomial if it has got more terms more than four they are called polynomials nomials means terms and poly means many many terms so thus the word polynomial is formed so now we have learned uh, what is a polynomial and different types of polynomial linear quadratic cubic etc so in general cubic is actually written as ax cube plus bx square plus cx plus d where specifically a should not be equal to 0 and in quadratic ax square plus bx plus c where a should not be equal to 0 otherwise it will turn into linear and here it is ax plus b where a should not be equal to 0. So these are the things that we have learned uh, in the previous class. Now we will see about the zero of the polynomial. You have already learned. Suppose p of x equal to 2x plus 3 is a linear polynomial. We And we say k is the zero of the polynomial. k is the zero of the polynomial or root of the polynomial or solution of the polynomial, anything of the polynomial. What do you mean by that? That is k is said to be the zero of the polynomial or k is the root. Root means any value that sub satisfies this equation or like p of k equals 0. Whenever we substitute k in place of uh, this 2x plus 3, you must get 0. That is, that is equal to 0. Then that value of k, that k is called the 0 of the polynomial. In this case, the 0 of the polynomial is k is equal to 2k is equal to minus 3 k is equal to minus 3 by 2. If you substitute minus 3 by 2 in place of x, we will get 0. Just check it. p of minus 3 by 2 equals 2 into in place of x, I am substituting minus 3 by 2 plus 3. I will get 2 and 2 cancels minus 3 plus 3 which is equal to 0. Therefore, k 
k is said to be the zero of the polynomial if k is said to be the zero of the polynomial p of x if p of k is equal to zero. So we understood the zero of the polynomial, and here in general you can say suppose a a x plus b is a polynomial such that p of x, and if k is the zero, so a k plus b equals zero, right? So how can I write b k is equal to minus b by a? or that is equal to negative of the constant term by coefficient of the coefficient of x a is the coefficient of x see the root or the zero of the polynomial is negative of the constant term divided by coefficient of the x thus we have here found out a relation between the solution of a linear equation solution of the linear equation that is k and the coefficient of the terms the a and b are the coefficient of these terms so we, here we got k is equal to negative of the constant term divided by constant uh, coefficient of x so can we even find can we find a relation between the root of a polynomial uh, for quadratic equation and also uh, the coefficient of its terms We'll see in the next section, in coming section of this chapter. In today, we'll discuss about how geometrical representation of zero of a polynomial is done. Suppose, let's take two x plus three be a polynomial. I mean, in how do we represent this on a line? We'll take this to be y. Y is equal to two x plus three. We need to represent it on a graph like this. This is the in coordinate plane. This is y axis and this is the x axis. We need to represent this. So for this, uh, I'll take x and y. You remember plotting? This is done by. I take uh, for if it I substitute here some value. If I take here two, I'll get two into two plus three equal to seven. That is for y, right? Y is equal to two into two plus. 3 that is 7 so y is equal to 7 if i take some other value say minus 1 so y is equal to 2 into in place of x i'll substitute minus 1 plus 3 that is equal to minus 2 plus 3 that is equal to 1 so i got it 1 i can make a straight line using these two points just writing the coordinate axis 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3, 4, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. You have to do it uh, in equal spacing. Now, 2 comma 7. 2 comma 7 comes here. The other point, minus 1, 1. Minus 1, 1 comes here. So, I am joining this. This line goes infinitely apart. So we have to see the point where it touches the x-axis. That's, you see, this is minus 1, 1. And this is 2, 7. And you check this point. This is minus 3 by 2, 0. The point where the line touches the x-axis is the 0 of this polynomial. You see the point where the graph of the line, graph of the polynomial, this is called the graph of the polynomial, we have the straight line, graph of the polynomial touches the x-axis is the solution, is the solution or zero of the polynomial. So here you see uh, the point where this line touches the x-axis is minus 3 by 2. So the x-coordinate of the point where it touches the x-axis is the point, the point, the x-coordinate of the point, the x-coordinate of the point where the graph of the polynomial touches the x-axis 
is the solution of the zero. So here the x coordinate is therefore solution is minus 3 by 2. x coordinate of the point where the graph of the polynomial touches the x axis is the solution of the polynomial here. The point where it touches is minus 3 by 2 0 and the x coordinate is minus 3 by 2 therefore minus 3 by 2 is the solution. So in general in general linear polynomial y is equal to ax plus b is the general form is a straight line which touches the x axis at exactly one point. Therefore, it will have exactly one solution, one solution of one zero, one solution or one zero of the polynomial. Here, in general, we can write zero as x equal to minus b by a is the point where it will touch the x axis. So, x equal to minus b by a is the general solution and it would touch the point where it touches is minus b by a comma 0 and the solution is minus b by a. So, in general for linear polynomial we can say this. Now, we have learned what is the geometrical meaning of 0 of a polynomial of a linear polynomial. Now, let us look what how is what is the geometrical meaning of a quadratic polynomial? Suppose the polynomial be x square minus 3x minus 4. Here you can see in page number 23 figure 2.2. Uh, they have marked the possible values in table 2 like uh, they have taken x, y, uh, x is minus 2 then value of y is substituting in place of y is equal to minus 2 square minus 3 into minus 2 minus 4 equals 4 plus 6 minus 4 that is equal to 6. So, after substituting each value they have uh, made a set of points like minus 1 0 0 minus 4 1 minus 6 etc. And then in page number 23 you can see on the screen figure 2.2 there is a graph which represents this quadratic equation. You can see there is a parabolic shape. This is a parabolic shape with somewhat like this and this is the representation of this polynomial. This is the graphical representation of this polynomial where y axis x axis. So, you see this graph cuts the x axis at exactly two points. Okay. So, the x coordinate of these two points is the solution of this polynomial. Here, you can see at the figure, it cuts at uh, minus 1, 0 and 4, 0. So, the solution of this quadratic equation is minus 1, the polynomial of this, uh, sorry, the 0 of this polynomial is minus 1. Therefore, 0 of the polynomial, 0 of the polynomial or root of the polynomial is equal to minus 1 and 4. So, we got exactly 2 polynomial. Now, you see the degree of this quadratic equation is 2 and we got exactly 2 polynomials, 2 roots, 2 0 of the polynomial. According to the equation here, we had y is equal to ax square plus bx plus c. So, this is in general term of a quadratic polynomial. So, the graph of the polynomial can be either of the shape just like we saw a parabola like this when a is greater than 0. And it can also have a parabola of this shape downward when a is less than 0. So, these are the different types of parabolic shape that can come uh, when a changes. So, and also solution will be two separate real numbers. But there are three different cases that can arise uh, according to the polynomial. Let us look into those cases. 
please take you can see on the screen page number 24 figure 2.3 there are two parabolas figure 1 and 2 you can see the two parabolas they are uh, one is downward parabola and other is upward parabola and they are both cutting the x coordinate of uh, a and uh, they are cutting the x coordinate at two different points a and a dash and they are the two zeros of the quadratic polynomial a x square plus b x plus c so when they are cut like similarly in our figure also here they have got they are cutting the x axis at two different points therefore uh, it got two zeros two zeros of this polynomial now when it comes to the second case here the graph cuts x axis at exactly one point here you see the figure 2.4 the graph is cutting the x axis just touching at just exactly one point uh, that is actually acting as its tangent so the root of the polynomial the coordinate has only one zero for the quadratic equation ax square plus bx plus c in this case in both the figure one is downward parabola other is upward parabola you can see this is downward parabola it's touching at just exactly one point so it will have just exactly one zero and when it comes to upward parabola if it is touching exactly one point it will have only one zero and now come to page number 25 figure 2.5 you see the parabola is aren't touching the x axis at any point therefore the quadratic equation a x square plus b x plus z has no zero in this case so from the geometric representation of the quadratic polynomial we can say that either two distinct zeros or two equal zeros or no zeros this means that a quadratic equation has at of degree 2 has at most two zeros from the previous uh, from the quest we have said a x square plus b x plus c case 1 was we got it was like cutting the x axis at two different points we got two zeros case two was the parabola which cutting the x axis at exactly one point that is one zero or two equal zeros two equal zeros and the third case was the parabola wasn't cutting touching the x axis at any point so this is no zeros no real zeros so a quadratic equation can have maximum two zeros because the degrees two can only have maximum of two zeros so far we have seen linear polynomials geometrical meaning and also a zero of the quadratic polynomial geometrical meaning now let's consider the cubic polynomial geometrical meaning let's take uh, an example suppose y equal to x cube minus 4x is a cubic polynomial and uh, you see in figure 2.2 they have given uh, the representation like uh, they have taken x coordinate and y coordinate they are represented table 2.2 they have taken minus 2 then y is equal to minus 2 cube minus 4 into minus 2 that is equal to minus 8 plus 8 equal 0 so y we got here as 0 similarly they have calculated for rest and made a table and the graph of this uh, polynomial is given in page number 26 you can see on the screen figure 2.6 this is somewhat coming of the shape this in the from the figure you see that the zero of the polynomial is the point where the uh, where the x coordinate of the point where this graph touches the x axis here it touches at minus 2 0 0 0 and 2 0 therefore 0 of the polynomial are minus 2 0 and 2 we got 3 here the degree is 3 so we got 3 different polynomial or 3 different 0 of the polynomial you can see in figure 2.7 that's the graph for x cube you see here the graph touches the x axis at 0 0 at the origin therefore 0 is the only 
zero of the polynomial. Y is equal to x cube. The graph touches the x-axis at exactly one point. Therefore, zero is the only zero of the polynomial or the root of the polynomial. Also in the second graph, it touches the x-axis at two points. In the second graph, uh, the graph is of x cube minus x square. It touches the graph at two points. That's a cubic polynomial. And in figure 2.8, you can see it touches at just two points. That is 0, 0 and 1, 0. So the solution is 0 and 1 are the zeros of the polynomial. Which polynomial? y is equal to x cube minus x square. So we got two zeros. So from all these three we can see that a cubic polynomial have at most three zeros. The degree of a cubic polynomial is three and therefore it will have at most maximum of three zeros. Now let's look into examples. Take page number 27 figure 2.9 Look at the graph in figure 2.9 given below. Each is a graph of y equal to p of x where p of x is a polynomial. For each of the graph find the number of zeros of the polynomial. This is a very easy question. All you have to do see the number of times the graph touches the x axis. Let's look into the first figure. You see the graph here. The graph is touching that line is touching the x axis at exactly one point. Therefore the number of zeros of this graph is 1. It will have only 1 0. Okay. Now come to the second. You see it's a parabolic shape and it's touching the x axis at two different points. Therefore, it will have two zeros. Now you see the third one. It's touching the x axis at three different points. Therefore, this number of zeros of the polynomial of this uh, polynomial is 3. And in the third one, Fourth one, it is touching the x-axis. That is a straight line. That polynomial is touching the x-axis. The graph is touching just exactly at one point. Therefore, the number of zeros of the polynomial is also 1. Here, the fifth one also, that parabola is touching the x-axis at exactly one point. Therefore, the number of zeros of this polynomial would be 1. And now comes the last one. If you count... It's touching the x-axis at four different points. Therefore, the number of zeros of that polynomial is four. This is exactly how we have to do the exercise question. Come to page number 28, exercise 2.1. Similar same question. The graph y is equal to px are given in figure 2.10. For some polynomial p of x, find the number of zeros of p of x in each case. This is exactly how we did for example. In the first part, the graph of the polynomial is not touching the x-axis anywhere. Therefore, the number of zeros of the polynomial is 0. And the second graph you can see in the figure. It's touching the x-axis at exactly one point. Therefore, the number of zeros is 1. And the third graph, it's touching the x-axis at three different points. Therefore, the number of zero of the polynomial is three. The next, that parabolic shape that the graph is touching the x-axis at two different points. Therefore, the number of zeros is two. And if you come to question number five, you have to count the number of times this graph is touching the x-axis. If you count, you will see it's one, two, three, four. It's touching at four different points. Therefore, the number of 0 of this polynomial is 4. This is actually a very easy question. And here also, this fifth last one, it's touching the x-axis at 3 different points. So, number of zeros is 3. So, this is all for today. Today, we have learned the geometrical meaning of quadratic polynomial and how many numbers of zeros are there for a polynomial. We can see it by plotting the graph and how many times it touches the x-axis. That was a very quite interesting and an easy exercise. So in our next video, we'll start with the relation between the coefficient of a polynomial and the zero of the polynomial. So practice more questions related to this and see you in the next video. Thank you.